welcome to a windy day at Utopia Farms. The rams just got fed. So they're dug right in. And we'll go head into the barn and see what today has in store for us. Oh, buddy. So, um, here's another one of my theories. Um, I always said that uh, the stragglers in the group, there was reasons that they were stragglers and uh, didn't uh, get on with the group. Either one, you got a ram who's a dud. But if that's not the case, there seems to be we found over the last over 20 years that um, there's always some kind of issue uh, with those stragglers. So we, we've had uh, three ewes lamb in the last couple of days. And one of them is these twins that I've been struggling with to get on a bottle. Because mom was with them. And mom was weak and... Her issue was that she was old and uh, she was bred back to back. So probably she should have moved on instead of us keeping her, but she did well last year, so we thought she'd be fine. But uh, she just couldn't look after these guys. And uh, these two, they didn't understand that mom couldn't look after them. So when I offered them a bottle, they, they wouldn't take it. They kept running to mom and she couldn't look after them. So finally we made an executive decision and uh, moved her out of the jug. So for a day uh, or two, we tubed them. And then they began to realize that I was the one giving them milk. So um, today, uh, the two of them, um, when I came in the barn, they greeted me. They ran up to the gate and they drank a bottle. So they're a little, um, they're in a little poor condition, but uh, they look fantastic compared to how they were. And they're lively and these guys will do fine now. But the confusion was in leaving mom with them because they just, uh, probably mom was saying, no, no, drink off of me, drink off of me. And so they they tried to, but she just couldn't feed them. And so there was confusion. They didn't know why mom was wanting them to nurse off her and uh, who was this creature that was trying to give them milk and shove things down their throat. So that was one thing. And then after that, uh, we had uh, first timer have lambs. We're thinking they were premature. So this is one of them. The other one died last night. Um, it was even smaller than this one. Look at this, you can see. Really hard to see in the dark there. But she's, uh, she's under there. She's got a hot water bottle and I just uh, tubed her. Um, and we just removed her mum as well because even if this lamb makes it, and of course we hope it does, um, it's likely to be the thing with Tiny Tim. I don't know if you remember Tiny Tim. He was really tiny and we got him, um, pretty good. We brought him in the group pen, but we had them separated and stuff because we didn't want the other ewes to step on them and then... Of course, mom lay on him after like a month of getting him to where he was okay. And we figured same thing would probably happen with this lamb because uh, it's so tiny and the Suffolk moms are so big that we thought, you know, high probability she's just going to lay on it. So we just removed the mom from this one now. It's uh, too weak to take a bottle, so we're tubing it. But it's standing and it walks around, but it spends most of its day resting. So that was the other issue. And then this morning, this girl had her uh, lambs. Um, and one of the lambs had, we think it had a hernia or an umbilical hernia, or she was cleaning it and pulled out 
um, the uh, belly button because uh, it had it um, was leaking its intestines through the umbilical um, cord um, out into the open so it it died or maybe it was born dead we don't know she'd already had it um, but either way um, in that case it's kind of for the best because when you have lambs like this that you work on for weeks and weeks and they die it's just bad for the lamb it's bad for us it's just bad for everything whereas if it had a major problem at least it was over with quickly and it wasn't suffering and all that but her her remaining lamb she just had it he's woken up she's spinning around now she might still be passing her placenta because she has had lambs before but this lamb, the other lamb is fine. But I am gonna go check and see why she's doing that. He's got a towel on him because we're trying to dry, dry him off. There he is. But he, he's doing good. But uh, that's three in a row that had issues and we kind of, we're, we're just straggling at the end now and I, I just have this thing where if, uh, if there's going to be problems, it's the stragglers. But this guy, this guy, as long as she doesn't lay on him, this guy's going to do great because he's normal. And the other one was normal too, except for the hernia. So, but uh, these are things that uh, tie up your day and and kind of kind of make you a little sad and depressed a bit. Um, so we always hope that it works out. I'm not a triplet lover, as you may have gathered, but I do have a fondness for these three over here. These guys are a really nice crew. And actually, in the coverall, I got that one with the, the giant triplet lamb. I kind of like those guys, too. It all depends on the personality of the sheep. Hi, sweetheart. You got a lammy? You had no problems, did you? No problems. But the crosses are just so endearing with uh, all their coloring. If I have to put up with the noise, so do you. Okay, today's the big day for group three and four. Today the wall comes tumbling down. The wall comes tumbling, tumbling down. And the wall comes tumbling down. The wall comes tumbling, tumbling. Buddy. So now they all have a play box. These guys all know their moms and their way around. And like I say, feeding two groups and two creep areas is a lot more difficult and time consuming for the farmer. This gives the lambs more freedom because now they've got 140 feet to run in instead of uh, half of that number. So, um, but in the beginning, we have it just to make sure that uh, everybody's bonded quickly because when you're looking after a small group, it's much easier than a big group. But uh, nobody needs extra care in this group. And now they're all going to meet each other and see, this is the result. They're happy. More exercise. And it's hard to believe this was the little group only a few weeks ago. These are uh, 
doing really well in here. Hi, <laughs> you guys. Watch it. There's so many boys in that second group. No, and now they got the whole whole uh, space to run, and I think they like that too. Oh, that guy had to come back and see what that was. Oh. <laughs> This is where they develop their muscles. Get rid of some of that baby fat and develop muscle. Okay, be careful you guys. Slow down. They're gonna tip that box. These guys are getting heavy now. Like that one. Was that one really big? Yeah, everyone has to get on there. I'm surprised none of the ewes have been up on it. Look, is that lost the hot item? <laughs> Just trying to, trying to tidy up around here. We can't tidy up the mud, but we can move some of the equipment out of the way. So because he's so in love with the skid steer, he could have moved his wagon with a tractor, but he decided it would be more fun to drag it with the skid steer. So we're just getting, uh, trying to clean up and get ready for spring. Um, as things become open up, like we have room in here for storage, and the bales are slowly disappearing. Um, the mud we wish would disappear, but uh, we got a shear coming in on Monday, and uh, in April, April 23rd, we're going to have a farm tour here, so we'll put that up on YouTube too. And as we complete chores in this barn, just feeding the last of the hay in here, you can see the pen where we took the wall down, they're still at it. They're having a great old time over there. These guys are more relaxed. A few, there's a huddle over at uh, the salt mineral feeder. These guys are just romping around still. Um, half of them haven't seen that playpen before, so it's an extremely popular item. They used to, a whole bunch of them used to fit up there, but now, now with their size like that, uh, they're hard pressed to get two up there. Hi, buddy, who are you? You're very nice. You're very nice.
Oh, careful, buddies. Ah, uh, don't chew on me, honey. It's hard to videotape when you're chewing on me. Kevin, Kevin, come here. Come here, Kevin. Hi. Oh, buddy, you're so nice. You're so nice. You're such a nice boy. Are you a keeper, Ram? Yes, you are. I think uh, that guy there, that 84, is a purebred. Right here? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Might be a little bit of baby fat. Well, it's just, it's not so much anybody else, man. Does it look oh, like a dorsal? Like Kermit. Kermit. We're not liking that at all. It's a little brown ear that are hard ear. It's hard, it's hard to tag. Uh, no kidding. You don't tag them. It's extremely hard to tag them. You ready to go? Are you ready to go? Yeah. Here we go. I'm going to let you go. They're nudging me off the box okay, here. Let you go. I want you to relax. Ben? As much as we don't like having pigeons at our place, we also don't like cruelty to animals or things suffering. And back there in the rafters, there's a pigeon with a rope stuck around its leg and it's dangling from the rafters. We don't have a ladder that big, so I don't know how we're going to get it down, but we're going to see if we can save it see it what this is this is arnie's theory that's gonna work i figured we cut don't uh, cut the rope off or cut his leg off oh well yeah I, I, it's not like he's gonna try spear the pigeon okay so you can see that he's got this is gonna be really hard He's got a piece of twine wrapped around his leg and it's entwined around um, a post there. Oh. And he's free. He's got a rope a little bit still on his leg. <laughs> so, <laughs> it worked. But he, hopefully it's not uh, cutting his circulation off, but at least he's free to contaminate the feeders. This is Jethro. He's a really big ram that we we kept. But yeah, he's got he's from Snappy, and Snappy's old, and Snappy's QQ. So we need wanted to keep a son off of him that wasn't a QQ and of course remember on the genetics lesson that I gave you that uh, QQ he can never throw an RR but he can throw a QR and and Jethro here is a QR and then when we use Jethro we can breed him and get an RR I guess we'll call that a day um, hope you join us again tomorrow uh, Arnie fixed our way scale so we're going to do some random sampling on some of those Suffolk lambs, number two and number 79, and we'll try to get Hunchy in there and see how they did. So uh, hope you'll join us again tomorrow. Thanks for being here today, and um, we're going to say bye for now.